myself, Kendall Longer. I will be presenting on drug discovery of plexiplasma. Uh, I'll talk about an introduction, mechanism of action, drug development, clinical trial studies, dose which is administered, and uh, side effects and warnings. Uh, it is basically used as an actual therapy for uh, major depressive disorders as well as for the treatment of schizophrenia. It was approved by FDA in uh, 2015, July 2015. Uh, its brand name is Exoelki, uh, that is by Otuska and Lundbax. Uh, the chemical formula is 7441-benzothiopine-4-bipraxin-dihydrochlorine. Uh, the structure of the drug is given on the slide. The mechanism of action is basically not known, uh, but it, has, it is said that it affects on uh, the receptors like serotonin and dopamine receptors. Uh, the efficacy of plexiprazole may be mediated through a combination of partial agonist activity at serotonin receptors and uh, dopamine receptors and antagonist activity at 5-HT2A uh, receptors. Uh, plexiprazole exhibits high affinity for the receptors as a uh, for some nanomolar receptors as well as for non aerodynamic receptors in some cases. Uh, Plexiprazole is derived from aripiprazole uh, uh, and therefore there is no target identification was done for this drug as uh, uh, the patent for aripiprazole was uh, being uh, exhausted so they wanted to uh, launch a new molecule and wanted a new patent and uh, so they discovered Plexiprazole with some structural uh, changes like this particular group here a CA CA by change to the thiophene ring or so drug development like synthesis was structure based approach this uh, in this the structure was modified and therefore there was no target identification or library screening that they had to do which uh, saved the uh, money and time and for preclinical studies, uh, they, were, uh, they conducted various studies to prove the efficacy, safety and uh, toxicological effects. Uh, so they, uh, it was extensive uh, uh, in vitro and in vivo studies were conducted. Microdialysis was done to find out uh, any free uh, analyte that was present or not. Uh, electrophysiology was carried out and uh, animal studies for antipsychotic effects as well as for, uh, for depressant effects was carried out. Pharmacokinetic and toxicological studies were also conducted. Now, uh, from in vitro and in vivo studies, it was found out that uh, it has affinity for serotonin that it shows partial agonism and for FIHT2A it shows antagonism and in dopamine it shows D2 and D3 it shows antagonism, uh, agonism effect and for adrenergic receptor it had an antagonism effect. Now clinical trials, uh, phase 1 trials uh, were conducted and for uh, first phase, in phase 1 trials you, healthy human were uh, uh, given the drug and they were studied for pharmacokinetics parameters and it, was, uh, it had no uh, harmful effects. The pharmacokinetic parameters like CMAX, AUC and all uh, were shown to have a good profile. For pharmacokinetic and safety in patients, uh, for patients who had uh, depression or schizophrenia was carried out and in that also the pharmacokinetic profile was that similar to the, those found in healthy individuals. Um, now uh, this patient with hepatic and renal impairment were also studied so to understand the metabolism uh, whether it is affecting some of their metabolism or not. So it was found that the people, uh, patients with mild uh, liver problems or renal problems, there was no need to adjust the dose, whereas with what severe or moderate uh, renal problems and liver problems, the dose need to be adjusted and the concentration needs to increase. Uh, drug drug interaction uh, was studied and it was found that the rifampicin was having interaction with this drug and it decreases uh, Cmax values uh, of this drug. Uh, there was no major food uh, uh, food drug interaction with this uh, drug and so it was like it could be given with high fat diet also and pharmacodynamics were studied in humans. Now for phase 2 and phase 3, uh, the rationale behind it was like 
uh, abipiprazole was having major side effects and to overcome those side effects, uh, the brexipiprazole was developed and study designs were, uh, the, there were different study designs like the, for open label design double random uh, so studies were also carried out. Uh, uh, then it was study for efficacy, safety, tolerability uh, also which proved to be uh, the drug did not, uh, it was efficacious than present uh, depressive, uh, antidepressants and antipsychotic. It was more effective than those drugs. Now dose that is given is uh, for ta in case of major depressive disorder it is 45 mg uh, with starting dose it is and gradually it could be increased with the condition of the patient. And for schizophrenia, it is 1 mg per day. Side effect, it has major side effects uh, also with this drug, but it was better so it is used. Uh, it causes stroke in elderly people, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, cardio dyskinesia, and uh, various metabolism problems with decreasing white blood counts also. Uh, now in this, it is contraindicated with people having dementia because it increases the risk of death in those people so it is contraindicated and not given especially uh, to elderly people having dementia and uh, it, uh, when it is given for a longer period of time it says it is, it is not uh, stopping depression but it can cause suicidal thoughts so it is uh, like uh, the treatment should be uh, monitored uh, timely and see for any thoughts.